Hey everyone, I'm Eric, also known as EMC150, or just DMC for short, and welcome back to the finale of Legacy of Kain, Soul Reaver 2. So this shit has, has hit the fan for Raziel, <laughs> well, uh, at least for his anger. As last episode we saw uh, Janos die at human Seraphan Raziel's hand. Ow. We've fought a whole bunch of demons on our way here, all basically saying, Oh, ho, ho, he thinks he can save Nazgoth. What a fool. And on uh, things like that, you think you can make a difference. And what they don't realize is, Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> so, oh, of course, we can't just make that jump. So we have to get... Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm an idiot. I'm glad I realized uh, that I'm an idiot. Um, because every now and then I have to remind myself that I am, in fact, an idiot. And uh, I almost switched Reavers too soon. We need the Fire Reaver. That would have been really annoying. So now the doors can actually open. <laughs> you know. Yeah. That would have been really terrible. So now you have to make our way up and around in order to get the, the Light Reaver. Ow, oh, why are there two of you and why are you right guarding the ledge? Freaking ledge hogs. Hey! That's enough out of you. You as well. Oh. Ha! Oh, there he goes. First successful duck of the series, of the, of the entire uh, series, and of course it's in the finale. Bye. I'm glad I decided to start gliding. I forgot there was uh, like a breach in the uh, in the ground there. Are you chasing me? No. I don't know if he's at, if he survived the the fall or not, but it doesn't matter. This is the final dungeon essentially. It's not much of a dungeon. It's more like the final stretch. Actually, no, screw it. We're using the Reaver. Ow. Really? Yeah, you better run. Oh. She survived. Thought my Reaver was stronger than that. That's what I like to see. That's what I like to see. One hit kills. Look at the energy on that. I love it. I love the reaver effects in this game. Seize him. Oh, good luck with that. Why are you running? Ow. Ow. That's why she was running. Taking advantage of my stupidity. Okay, you know what? No, 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 no. We're still doing this. Get over here. Raziel doesn't care. Doesn't give two shits anymore. Suddenly and inexplicably, I discovered the Reaver suspiciously laid across my path. Again, I sensed nothing of that temporal distortion, the peculiar sense of displacement I had felt when I encountered the Reaver in William's Chapel. Cornered here with the blade, I suffered the same nameless dread that I had experienced when Janos first presented the Reaver to me. I felt at once repelled by the blade. And yet, overwhelmingly compelled 
to seize it. So, Raziel, here we are, finally. You have no choice but to confront me now. And I am not so foolish as I've let you believe. We have business to conclude. You knew I would lead the Seraphim to Janos, you vile bastard. You've been orchestrating my every move. <laughs> my destiny is an amusement to you. It was fun while it lasted. I think not, Raziel. Malik, do not let this creature leave. He poses a danger to the circle. Poor, deluded Raziel. Did you somehow imagine you had the guile to change history on me? I'm the time streamer. I knew your every intention before you did, you imbecile. Lord Mobius, there is trouble within. The circle is under Hold attack. Hold fast, Malik. This one is the real danger to us. What are you trying to concoct here, Mobius? You toxic creature. Did you imagine I'd simply allow you to run loose, corrupting everything you encounter? I admit that I've underestimated you to this point, Mobius. But it's a mistake I won't repeat. Wrong again, Marcier. Now, Malik. Bolt the door. Using his staff to disable my wraith blade, Mobius effectively disarmed me, leaving me with only one choice of weapon. And yet I confess, it was not the lack of options, but blind rage that made me take up the Reaver. In my fury, it felt as though my hand had acted of its own will. And now, that same hand clutched the hilt with unyielding strength, and I felt a constrained tingling, a remote but palpable sense of longing, as the disabled wraith blade tried vainly to embrace its physical twin. And now we have the Soul Reaver. <laughs> so that part of the cutscene there, you started hearing voices cry out for Malak, and uh, he said that the circle is under attack. That's actually from the original Blood Omen game. That's actually a really nice detail that they uh, they threw in there. And uh, so, yeah, now that we have the Soul Reaver, a few things about it. Now that I had taken it up, the Reaver and I were inescapably joined. The harder I tried to release the blade, the more tightly my hand gripped the hilt as if possessed of its own will. So if you think back to uh, the last time Raziel uh, picked up the Soul River, he uh, almost killed Cain with it, he drove it into the, to the, uh, the tomb of William. That whole scene there with the, uh, the Soul River, like his Wraith Blade, coiling around the blade and basically controlling him, yeah. Uh, the only reason why that's not happening now, as he said, is because it's being suppressed by Mobius' staff. And so now that we have this, we can't put it down. Oh yes. Come to take your revenge, demon. Back to hell with you. I recognize these two as my former brethren, in life as Seraphan, and in unlife as Cain's vampire sons. Melchiah and Zephon, the weakest of Cain's brood. These bastards had no idea what future lay in store for them, how they would become the very thing they so despised. The Reaver hummed with ravenous anticipation. Janos had called it a vampiric blade, endowed with the power to drain its victims of their lifeblood. I was eager to see what the Reaver would do to these two. And so if you see my health, as I'm getting my ass kicked here, I'm not my health is immediately refilling. Would you stop 
Seriously. And thus we have the other problem that this game has. Despite the fact that you're invincible here, we've got the stupidly aggressive AI and 2 on 1. And this time, they're not actually leaving you alone. They're both attacking outright. But of course, at this point, it doesn't matter because they can't even really hurt me. So, from this point on in the game, you are invulnerable. It does not matter how much you get your butt kicked. No, they can't do anything to you. So you are guaranteed, once you get to this point, you are no longer dying. Yeah, and you actually can't devour these guys, uh, the souls of these guys. And that actually makes sense, because uh, canonically speaking, they actually, as he said, this is Zephon and Melkaia, so we know from the first game that they become vampires. Also, uh, something that I didn't do before walking in here because I forgot this next room started this. Um, well, I'll do it in a sec, so it will also explain why you can't uh, devour their souls. I don't think it, I can do it now. The Reaver exerted some mysterious power over me. It sustained my energy, enabling me to prolong my physical manifestation indefinitely. In fact, bonded to the blade as I was, I could no longer shift into the spirit realm at will, nor was I able to summon the Reaver's twin, for my wraith blade had been disabled in the confrontation with Mobius. Yeah, that's what happens if you hit select with this right now. Well, only the first time. These are blacked out, you can't do them. Uh, you, you can. So uh, that that's uh, another in-game explanation there as to why you're uh, invulnerable, and why you can't shift. Melkaia and Zephon fell before my blade. I felt the Reaver's bloodthirst as keenly as I ever had when I was still a vampire. I could sense the boundary between us dissolving. The Reaver was consumed with my rage, and I was intoxicated by its bloodlust. The blade had a vitalizing effect on me. My physical energy no longer decayed over time, and the wounds inflicted by my foes healed almost instantly. The Reaver had made me invincible. How's that for a power trip? You are you literally become invincible. Uh which door opened and where is it to where I'm standing? <laughs> I think it's over here. No, is it here? I'm lost in a, there it is. But yeah, this is another reason why I actually do like this game so much, is that you really, at this point, are all-powerful. That was a really weird walk. to reclaim the monster's black heart. You'll have to get through us first. My former brethren, Duma and Rahab, confronted me next. This all seemed so elegantly choreographed. Exhilarated by the Reaver, I was drunk with revelations. I could finally appreciate the delicious irony of Cain's blasphemous private joke and I reveled as I colluded with him across the centuries. For it was I who put these bastards in their tomb, thus providing the corpses for Cain to raise as his vampire sons a millennium from now. Now that really is poetic irony. And uh, Rezio really has uh, come a long way as the start of this game, at the end of the last game, the start of this game, we saw he was uh, still sort of revering the Seraphan as uh, like uh, righteous holy warriors sort of thing, and like now here he is, like by this point, he's uh, so hellbent on their destruction, he doesn't care about them at all. It's uh, 
it's it, it's it's nice. It's good writing, good storytelling. Like, would you stop blocking? why those guys were so much easier than the last two but yeah as you said this is so elegantly choreographed so we've just fought the f you know all four bosses from the first game was my brother Turel, who along with Duma would bear me into the abyss without questioning Cain's command. So dutiful and righteous, even as a vampire. I guess some habits die hard. The vampire Turel had eluded my vengeance. The Saraphan Turel would not. Yeah, so Turel was supposed to be in the first game. But uh, due to time constraints, uh, his uh, area and his boss fight and all that there was uh, left out. I don't know if it was scrapped entirely, but uh, it uh, it was not put into the game, the final game anyway. So uh, he would have given you the telekinesis power, but uh, so instead we just got that from an enemy, uh, like a powerful enemy sort of thing. But again, it was one of Turel's uh, uh, bloodline or brood, so there's still that at least in it. And uh, Turel Vampire, uh, yeah. Did, so yeah, we, as he said, didn't uh, didn't. Oh, would you stop? Oh my God! Why can't I attack this fast? <laughs> but yeah, so the Vampire Turel, we never got to see. Maybe we'll see him in the next game. Who knows? Well, I do, and anyone who looks it up will also know. And approaches. I say after entering the wrong hallway, or at least the wrong hallway to say that in. This is where I should have said that. for me. You'll find I'm not such easy prey. I don't want to kill you, but I will if I must. Return the heart to me and we can end this now. So, you've come to avenge that filthy parasite and reclaim his foul heart. You're a righteous fiend, aren't you? Apparently I am. No, vampire. This is where it ends. But you won't be leaving this room. Now, let's finish this. I'll make it mercifully quick. As you did for Janos? <laughs> no, that beast had eluded us for far too long. It would have been a shame to end him too quickly. It's ironic, really. The great Janos Ordrin turned out to be no challenge at all. Thanks to you. Did you hear his cowardly screams when I tore that black heart out of his carcass? <laughs> oh man, if you only knew the truth. That was actually kind of funny. It looked like he tripped. Uh, would you seriously? Why? Why can't I attack anywhere near as fast as these guys can? It's ugh.
Yeah, I like that line. So righteous, aren't you? Apparently I am. <laughs> oh, but you... S there we go. And so this actually is the final, effectively the final boss of the game. And how fitting, it's technically yourself. He just really doesn't stand a chance. The sad thing is, I think this fight would be easier if I didn't have a weapon. And I don't mean the Soul Reaver, I mean like, my own unarmed combat. Alright, right there should have been a dodge and he stabbed me. Like an- ah! Uh. Okay, that was just poorly timed on my part. That, you know what, I do forget there's a there's a block button. Alright, this is it. Sensing its twin, the wraith blade uncoiled itself from me, and instead wound lovingly around its former self. I felt its grip loosen, and as the blade left me, its absence chilled me more than its presence ever had. A foreboding sense of emptiness and loss stole over me, and a terrible revelation gathered like a storm at the edge of my awareness. With all other foes exhausted, the conjoined blades turned themselves on me, and I realized, finally, why I had sensed nothing when Janos offered me the blade. The Reaver was never forged to be a soul-stealing weapon. The ravenous, soul-devouring entity trapped in the blade was, and always had been, me. This is why the blade was destroyed when Cain tried to strike me down. The Reaver could not devour its own soul. The paradox shattered the blade. So, this was my terrible destiny. To play out this purgatorial cycle for all eternity. I could not bear it. Despair overwhelmed me. You. weakening, unable to hold on any longer. The Reaver was too strong, the compulsion to simply let go, too great. And then, a growing sense of vertigo and the familiar displacement, the paradoxical moment when my twin soul hovered both outside and inside the Reaver blade. This was the instant the glimmer of temporal distortion Cain had been counting on all along. This was the edge of the coin, the minute flicker of probability upon which Cain had gambled everything. <laughs> Now you are free to reclaim your true destiny, Raziel. Behind Cain's eyes, I could see new memories blooming and dying as history labored to reshuffle itself around this monumental obstruction. And I could see by the dawning horror on his face that perhaps we had strained history too far this time. That by trying to alter my fate, he may have introduced a fatal paradox. My god. 
the Hilton. We walked right into their trap. Raziel, Janos must stay dead. But Cain's warning was lost as I slipped into the spirit realm, too weak to maintain my physical form. And there, waiting for me as always, was the Reaver, the Wraithblade, my own soul, twinned and bound eternally to me. And I realized that I could never escape my terrible destiny. I had merely postponed it. History abhors a paradox. And there's that line again. Very fitting in this game. And so yeah, here's a code uh, to unlock all the bonus material in the game. There's quite a bit of it, actually, and some of it's pretty good. Definitely recommend, uh, definitely recommend watching it if you have the game. But yeah, that was Soul Reaver 2. And that is where a huge chunk of the story just kind of falls into place about everything. And, uh... That, well, I remember when I first played this game, I was like, oh my god, and then, damn it! Because this was part two of clearly uh, a, a th at least three parts at this point. And uh, the game didn't come out for a few years afterwards, so, uh, yeah. I think it came out in 2002 or 2003, the next game. And so that was, uh, that was a hell of a, a, a cliffhanger to sit on. <laughs> But yeah, I playing through this again, I'm loving this game just as much as I did the first time. I still have all the same complaints. The, the controls can be a little better for the uh, for dodging and whatnot there. I don't know whether to say they're too precise or they could be a little more precise because I still have several moments several moments where I try to dodge to the left or the right or whatever there and then instead of actually dodging in that direction, I hop towards them or jump back instead and really not helpful. So, uh, other than that, the lack of boss fights are a little, uh, a little annoying. The aggressive AI at, at times is, um, I want to say lazy, actually, because they could have done something else with, uh, with a lot of these enemies instead of having them just attack faster than you ever can and just rapidly attack and just keep attacking and keep attacking. What they could have done was give them a slightly different moveset instead, so instead of attacking the same way as every other enemy, you have different types of attacks to dodge instead. That would have been a bit more of an improvement, if you ask me, but I think what they were trying to do is really uh, drive home the fact that you can block in this game and you have the duck, and use those a little better, but I don't know, I just, uh, I, I always forget that they never actually use them, so maybe it's uh, a lot better if you know what you can duck and what you can't, and you can duck the attack and get a counterattack in at the same time, break up their combos and whatnot. Maybe maybe that's what you're intended to do. I'm sure that's what you're intended to do, I just suck at it, so. <laughs> but yeah, that was Soul Reaver 2. Uh, the next game in the series is uh, Legacy of Kane Defiance. And I am planning on doing that next, so uh, next week, episode one of Defiance will most likely be up. And uh, that uh, that's really, I've said all I can about this game. Uh, it's not overly expensive, you can find it on Steam very easily. Um, so, if you, again, if you're interested, if this looks good and something you'd like to play for yourself, go ahead and grab it. It's definitely worthwhile. So with that, I'm actually going to leave the rest of the credits to play out. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, thank you for uh, for supporting this uh, this channel, this series, in whatever way you are. Just watching, whatever it's it's cool. Like it. Thank you all, and uh, until next time, take care. You here.